Hey there everybody and welcome to the Procedural River Generator tutorial series where we are going to make a procedural river. If you haven't seen the other parts, uh, check them out. Uh, what we have gotten so far is we have taken a curve and that could be a custom curve that you input. Um, let me actually go to wireframe so you can see it. Uh, you take a curve and it's going to turn it into a uh, strip that most importantly, we can control the uh, thickness of and it stays uh, centered and all this, assuming you don't make it too crazy. Um, if it gets crazy, you can just take this and like smooth out the curve. Um, okay, so we have that um, and we intend to make a very fancy material that will kind of flow water along this. Uh, but to do that, we need to send information to the shader editor. We need to make a coordinate system that lets us create a texture coordinate space that lets us flow things. So we need to know two things. One, I want to know how far along the river we are. That's useful information. Another one is I want to know how far across the river we are in some sense. So this could be our X coordinate um, and our Y coordinate could be the flow of it in some sense. So how do we bring that information to the shader editor? Well, first of all, uh, let's make a material that lets us actually visualize things. So I'm going to make a material so that all our geometry is, has that material applied. Then in the shader editor, we can edit this material. So let's actually check that this works. So I'm in render mode, I'm changing the color, perfect. Uh, what I wanna do is invoke a coordinate system because you'd want something like uh, UV coordinates, but we don't have them, right? So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, for this, we need, first of all, to know uh, how far along the river we are. That's basically asking um, how far along the original curve are we, right? Because if we know where the curve is, we know everything else. Okay, so what I can do is I can take this curve that we resampled and like repositioned, um, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we can take it and extract the spline parameter. So I'm going to use a store named attribute. This is a node that can send information right to the shader editor. What information do I wanna send? The parameter, the spline parameter factor. This tells us again, a, a number between zero and one, zero being at the start, one being at the end of where are we along the curve. I'm gonna call this variable u1. Another thing I want for another store named attribute is how far this way across are we? And remember, this is basically proportional uh, to the extrusion, right? So the information should be here. If you think about it, it's almost like we took the curve, this curve, and made like two of them and connected them. What this means is that if we set this one, this strip to zero and this strip to one, we can interpolate zero to one here and here and everywhere, okay? Uh, basically what this means, and I wanna make sure, yeah, I didn't undo that. Uh, basically what this means is that I can uh, take the extrude mesh, take the top, and what top means in this case is what uh, is extruded in the selection. That's gonna be equal to one and everything is equal to zero. We can take that and store it as a U2 and connect that to the uh, geometry and make sure this is connected here. Okay, so again, U1 is telling us how far along the thing we are. U2 is telling us, are we at the original vertex or the extruded vertex that we are going to interpolate? Okay, let's visualize this. What we can do is bring in our attributes by using an attribute node. Let's uh, use U1, and let's use U2, and let's see what that looks like. So U1 should give us a black and white gradient that goes along it. A good way to test this is you send this through a greater than node, and you can see the flow of this in some sense. So it goes from zero to one. Um, the other one should give us a gradient going this way. Again, it works because our original curve has points set to zero, and the selection is only for the extruded points and interpolates between zero and one. Uh, and another way to visualize this is using the greater than zero to one. Um, so we have a nice coordinate system. All we need to do is combine it into a two dimensional thing. So I'm gonna combine X, Y, Z, uh, which one you make X and which one you make Y is arbitrary, just be consistent. So what I'm doing here is I'm making X be the uh, flow, how far along the river we are and Y be uh, how far across we are. Just a convention, doesn't matter. Um, the nice thing about this now is that we can map anything that uses a coordinate system to this uh, strip. So I can use the, uh, this as the coordinate system uh, for, for this, right? So now we have a checkerboard and it's gonna work no matter how much we extrude it. It's always gonna work and we can make it proportional to length if we wanted to. 
um, so it doesn't stretch this. Um, and the way you would do that, by the way, is you do a division of or a multiplication by the uh, total length. So it would be something like this, right? So we store the factor, but we multiply it by the length, which does seem to do something weird at the beginning. But as you can see, this makes it an uh, even amount of, uh, or no, we don't want the length. We want the uh, total length is the issue. Do we have something like that? Curve length, we want it to be a constant. So this, this, there we go. Now it's going to have this be consistent. And I guess that is something that we want. Again, the advantage of this is we know where we are along the curve. What this means, and a river flows, uh, what this means is that we can take this, add to the x axis, no, no, add to the other axis. Did I get these flipped? I guess I did. Uh, we could do something like this, and it's going to flow along the curve. So if we can make this look like uh, water, and we're going to talk about how to do that in the materials, uh, then we can have this kind of flow along uh, the river. So what did we do in this part? We made a coordinate system that looks like this. Um, and that is useful for a whole bunch of things. So I want to just check if I got these mixed up. U2 is the uh, flow. So I'm just going to reverse these. So our x-axis goes along the thing. Our y-axis goes across it. So there you go. We made a coordinate system. Uh, in the next part, we could try adding waves or maybe a material or something like that. Uh, we'll figure it out. I think I want to add waves because that's also going to use this coordinate system since I want the waves to flow along here. Other than that, uh, that is part two.